Hello, I'm Russell and sometimes I build things. This is part two of a series of probably three. So if you missed the first one, there'll be a link down below or up in the corner or somewhere for you to go and find and watch that. Stay tuned because there will be a third part at least. And uh, let's continue with the project. So I'm attempting to do something with the cockpit windows for the shuttle. So these are the three window shapes and I'm using styrene plastic and I'm going to cut four each of these shapes and then two each will be hollowed out to form the window frames and the others will be the window panes. That's the plan. These are now done, and what I need to do is carefully separate them, hopefully without breaking any of these little frames. This is, I believe, a dish drying mat, but it has an amazing texture, which looks a little bit like the tiles are space shuttle. And what I'm hoping, it's kind of foamy, I'm hoping this top surface is going to peel off the foam if I cut the edge off. Let's cross our fingers and find out. Does it, does it, does it? It's, it does. Look at that, perfect. Beautiful. Look at that. Space shuttle surface if ever there was one. And uh, it's interesting, but not what I need. That is now rubbish.
now I'm going to add some fabric to the vertical stabilizer and then I think fabricing the thing is done. That thing is a cable tie and that is the most frustrating experience I have had in trying to adhere one thing to another thing ever. That cable tie did not want to glue to this thing and I'll explain why because I feel kind of dumb for not realizing. This is our offending cable tie. This is a piece of fabric from cargo shorts and this is a dish drying cloth. So you can see where the problem is because every single time I went to put super glue on this stupid cable tie, the uh, dish drying cloth wicked it all away. So I had a heck of a time getting that to actually glue in there. But it's in there. Day something. It's raining, a bit miserable. But I've bought some of this for uh, reasons which I will demonstrate. Okay, so the point behind this stuff is these thrusters. So I had hoped that I'd be able to use these Pischler things from Ikea, which I've used on these thrusters for the rest of them, but of course they're all different sizes. So I have now obtained some 4.8 millimeter and 3.2 millimeter styrene tube at ridiculous expense, but hopefully it will do the job and it will also mean that I can actually allow these pieces to stick out past the, uh, the actual surface so that once the EVA foam goes on there, it'll all be nice and flush, which is the idea so here we go and that's what we have and I'm happy enough with that it'll do So this is where we are at the moment. I'm really happy that this surface is generally very smooth because that's something that I didn't like on the larger one that I made. So something that has happened though is that I've realized that I've made a couple of mistakes in the way I've put this together. So I'm going to attempt to fix those things now. One of them is, it seems painfully obvious now and I don't know how I missed it, but this texture should go up to this line. So these three panels here below this line should all be filled with this texture. But rather than get frustrated at myself for having missed that, I'm going to take a different approach and introduce another texture into the mix for these three panels just to be different. Change of plans. So I've, I've gone ahead and used the same camouflage material because the, uh, the tablecloth deteriorates a little too quickly if it's not hemmed. So, oh well, still looks good. Okay, we're about two and a half weeks in and that's where we're up to. Today I get to flip the orbiter over and score into the bottom of it about 20,000 tiles. So that should be entertaining.
Okay, tiles are done. It's now time to assault this thing with some primer and see what needs to be fixed from there. So this is the last time it will be funny looking green camo colors. So here we go. If it didn't look like the space shuttle from Armageddon before, it does now. Uh, I'm about to start applying gap filler to the gaps. Uh, because the surface is covered with EVA foam and fabric, I find that using this stuff, because it's flexible, generally does a pretty good job of filling the gaps. pretty awful but it will finish up quite nicely. And here we have the uh, thingies into which the engines mount and if you're at all familiar with 3D printing, you'll be aware of the fact that that is a failed print. But I still think I can make them work. It didn't fail too low in the printing process. So that's what they end up looking like once attached. And it does just stand off at a slight angle, which is exactly what I designed into the thing. I was worried that because the print failed, it wouldn't actually be deep enough to correctly set the angle, but it seems to. So I'll put the other two together and we'll see how they look. I think they're going to work quite well. I just need to fill in the, the failed parts of the, the bottom bits. So I'll do that. So here is our orbiter as of the moment. It's painted and looking pretty good. There's a couple of spots here and there that need touching up, but that's good. I'm happy with that. And that brings us to the end of part two. There will be a part three, so if you enjoyed this and you want to see where it goes, feel free to have a look down there somewhere and find the big button that says subscribe and punch it. Otherwise, thanks for watching and you're awesome. <laughs>